every trick in the book, I'll try my best to get your hold. I'm gonna use every trick in the book, I'll try my best to get your, get your hold. A quick introduction for describing my side. My face is forgettable, a regular guy. Now I can be anyone, anywhere I aim. I just need the mindset, a story and a name. Just started working here, haven't got my badge yet. My hard hat and clipboard's the same as all access. Status and a rooftop, finish with my case soon. Taking people's lunches from the bags up in the break room. Talking through my story, recited it with confidence. Make you feel at ease, disregard your common sense. Now I'm in, hope you're ready for the consequence. Cause I'm picking locks, slipping off with all your documents. I play the subconsciousness. Never Welcome to the social-engineer.org podcast number, what is it? Number 24, I think. Number 24. See, Dave, last time you were definitely more energetic, but this was good. I thought I, thought I, was, I mean, I thought I upped myself this time. I figured, I figured since it's all about the book this time, you'd be like really excited. But I, I actually upped my game a little bit right there. I mean, yeah. can I get can I get an unbiased opinion? Well, not Jim. Jim will always just piggyback you anyway. But uh, Ducky, that's not true. <laughs> and plus, you just called him Ducky. So why Ducky. is he going to? Yeah, Ducky. why? <laughs> who's Ducky? Yeah, who's Ducky? <laughs> what are you I, British now? I mean, you don't even know his name. You wrote a book with him. You don't even know his name. I mean, I know it's Dev Kieran. Wait, 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 wait. What is that about British? Because the British guy wouldn't say Ducky. <laughs> oh, I don't know. What is it, not Ducky? So, Dookie. D-O-O-K-I-E, Ducky. Dookie. Dookie, Dookie dude. The same thing. <laughs> yeah, same <laughs> thing. What, are you from New England? Oh, Up on yeah, the so, so Dove, Dove, how are you doing today, Dove? <laughs> right, D-A-V-E, Dove. <laughs> I mean, it's so dookie. But I don't, I don't know, I don't know what the difference is, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh boy. Well, as you can tell, as usual, we have Dave here, and hey. al- also Jim. Who, Jim? Hi. Yeah, great. Thanks, Jim, for the energy. Mutz, how you doing? Doing good. And Dookie slash Ducky, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing fine, yeah. thank you. I'm doing just Ducky. <laughs> he is. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand what's the difference between Ducky. That's all I'm saying. Dookie. Dookie. Do- it's double O, so it's a long O. Dookie. Dookie. They can send you pics showing the difference between <laughs> Dookie and a Ducky. <laughs> <laughs> it's so Dookie. Oh, I'm man. Sticking, I'm sticking with it. I don't care what you guys say. Yeah, you know what, Jim? Jim, you sent him the pics between the difference of a Ducky and Dookie. <laughs> do that. Just not on the podcast. The movies are PG rating. Anyhow. D- Dookie. We have a lot of lot of thought of news going on this month. Uh, we of course launched the adult CTF back in the end of May, beginning of June. Wait a second, the way you worded that. The yeah, I know it CTF. totally it totally <laughs> sounds pornographic in nature. I, I I have to agree. The adult CTF. Yes, yeah, that does sound. Uh, oh, it's not really bad. Really? That sounds. Yeah. That's how does yeah, uh, okay. CTF capture the flag? How does that sound bad at all? It's the word adult. Put it yeah. in front of it. Really? So anytime, so anytime I put the word adult in anything, you guys automatically bring it to a... Uh, yeah, you see the master of social engineering just oblivious to common words. It's just yep. sad to see this, huh? It's a bad, <laughs> day, for, it's a bad day for social engineering. No, it's, just, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's just my mind's not in the gutter. That's it, guys. It's just my mind's not in the gutter. I'm on a higher plane, I guess. Mm-hmm. So the older person, CTF, is that better? <laughs> the standard CTF. Oh, okay. So how about the normal? This? The how uh, the um, the stru- the not the, for midgets one. The, the <laughs> <laughs> dear lord, what if there's a midget in the in the CTF this year? That'd well, be awesome. No, it's okay. No one will see them anyway. <laughs> oh, that's horrible, guys. I mean, oh, there actually oh. might be a short person in the CTF. We actually went there. We we, we went there. We went there. <laughs> wow. Between 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 Mutz and Jim, <coughs> Dave, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I'm on your side. I can't. Um, you, you can't edit that out, you know. I know. I can't. Uh-uh. I can't. Yeah. Tell, wow. I, this is a, this is a huge victory for yeah. me today. It, it really is. It really is. I mean, if anyone's gonna go there, I thought it'd be you, but it's Mutz and Jim. I'm just shocked. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, you, did, you did. But you did start off the conversation with something dirty, Chris. So it kind of spiraled dirty. down from there. We ha- we oh, have, it was dirty. We have two CTFs this year. Got, got a new survey. We new have new survey. We have the two CTFs. We have the the sh- the schmoo strikes back. Which is our the same CTF as last year, but with a lot of new stuff that got kicked off. We have all of our reports back in. Which I tell you the truth, um, we've been reviewing the reports. What do you think, Jim? They're like a thousand times improved from last year, huh? Yeah, the, the, just the, a very consistent um, level of quality across them. Where last year we had maybe a couple that were that were very good. Um, this year, they're all at least that quality. So. Yeah. Scoring the the reports this year was was difficult because they were such high quality overall. 
uh, and a lot of really good concise information in the reports instead of like 80 pages of dumps of of just information found on the web they really uh, worked on making the reports clear nice. Concise, yeah, really nice, really nice. Well, really laid out some good attack vectors too. And also, to be fair too, um, there were a couple that were crap. And so, if you're a contestant, just wonder if yours is one of those that was crap. <laughs> wow, are you Jim? A Jim, Jim, I have a question. Did, did your did your kid break another TV or something? <laughs> are you in a bad mood, man? Did, did something happen? No, I'm in a good mood. Because I mean, like you're you're just miserable today. <laughs> I want to ruin everyone else's yeah, day. That's exactly. <laughs> I mean, really. Jeez, wow. man. Jeez, Jim is like just horrible today. I guess I can't cut that out either. You know, <laughs> man. And, and then and then we have. Man, I'm not even gonna say this because you guys are gonna take this to a whole nother level. Yeah. We, ha- we have a. We're part of the DefCon Kids um, whole setup where we're going to be giving a couple speeches about social engineering and we're running a capture the flag for those under the age of 16 and over the age of eight. That was more than a mouthful than I wanted to say, thanks to you guys. <laughs> and uh, that actually got a lot of stinking press already. I cannot believe. Um, you know, it's interesting. My dad, my dad was like, "Dude, you got to put my, my son into this." I'm like, "What? What are you talking about?" And he's like, "This." Your dad, your dad. That means that your son is you. His son is you. No, he said. You know, my dad said you have to put your son. Oh, I see. Are you talking okay. to me? So it, 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 would, it would go down one to my son. <laughs> but my son's only three, so I didn't think it was going to be good for that. No, I don't think he'd be. <laughs> yeah, here, although, use, this, use this lock pick, and then he, like, gouges his eye out. <laughs> although <laughs> although it, he did he did social engineer you, but we, we're not going to see that until DEF CON. Your son social engineered me? Yes, but you really? won't see the results until DEF CON. Okay, yeah, I'll be waiting for that. No problem. No problem. Um, no problem. Yeah, no problem. With that. I guess I guess what's happened is that Dave has given up on trying to to get you, and now he's like giving it to his kids. <laughs> Probably his kid will be better at it. I'll tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah, I expect more than his kids for sure. Yeah, I mean his kids are actually cute. <laughs> I hate you guys so you know, much. <laughs> his kids are actually cute and and nice. So if they ask me for something, I might be more prone to to comply because you know they're adorable. Are you still talking? I just don't. I just don't believe they're really your kids. But you know, heck, that's another podcast. What? Not what? Still talking? Anyhow, we're on to the CTFs. A lot of press on the on the the one for kids. Um, we got, I think, about thirty some contestants so far signed up for that, and um, a lot of, a lot of interested a lot of interested people coming from all over, and not just in the U.S. We have people coming in from other countries too for this, which is quite amazing. Their first con in America. And they're making it DEFCON uh, to come over and, and take part, of, have their kids take part of this event. So I'm going to see how, how amazing that turns out. We have some um, really interesting events planned uh, for the Capture the Flag for them. It's going to be an all-day event. I'm not going to give too much out on what it is. We have a lot of questions coming in on exactly what will be involved. But what we have been releasing is that it's involving breaking ciphers and using elicitation skills and SE skills to get information from people and uh, and then also lock picking and other things like that. So it will be, it will be cool. And uh, the registration is still open, although it's closing soon. So if you're bringing a child to the DEF CON conference, then feel free to hop over to social-engineer.org and register them before we close the registration. I actually saw all sorts of uh, all sorts of uh, responses to the kids CTF. By the way, yeah, everything yeah. from this is great. You know, kids should be learn- should be taught to think laterally. To you know, what the heck are you doing teaching kids how to pick locks? You know what I mean? Well, I'll tell you what uh, happened is when it first came out, when DefCon first announced it, before there was any interviews, uh, all the people that wrote stories were like, "We are the ruiner of families." You know, <laughs> we're we're teaching children to be evil, and we're creating the next Lulsec. Uh, really, that was someone actually said that in in one of their blogs on online that we're creating the next Lulsec move. Then we had some interviews and we set people straight. Um, we we had one with uh, Reuters. Uh, that guy was really good. And um, so we said Reuters. Reuters. What? Reuters. Who? Huh? I believe so. Reuters. I believe so. The news. Yeah. The news organization. Yes. Yeah. yeah Reuters. Mm-hmm. Ducky. <laughs> Oh boy! Oh, yeah. <laughs> and anyhow, after some interviews, it all got cleared up. Blah blah blah. Everything's good. People love us now, and most people love us. There are still some out there that are not involved, not getting into it. But for the most part, we're doing okay with that. All right. Then just make sure they don't send their kids over. 
Yeah, that's what we said. Basically, if you don't like it, don't bring your kids. Yeah. We got some good uh, sponsors, though, for the events that are coming up. Much, you'll love this. Offensive Security, of course, is one of our sponsors. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. Helping us out with um, the financial support and setup and everything of, of the CTFs, both of them. And we, of course, appreciate that. We should mention a couple things about Offsec, uh, live training. Man, we got a ton of live trading coming up. Yeah, we've got some cool live trading coming up as we, well. We really do. We got, okay, so the first thing that's going to happen, of course, Vegas is sold out. So people, believe it or not, I'm not even kidding this, people are still emailing me asking if there's ways that they, we can get them into the, into the, the Vegas um, PWB or all classes. And they've been sold out for months. So, you know, we're just telling them no, of course. But uh, shortly after that, let's see, we have, um, we have our PWB St. Kitts. Which yeah. that, that class is filling up. That's actually an exciting class. Our first time we're ever doing one, um, the first Caribbean class. So that's going to be pretty awesome. That's going to be an exciting class. And then we have an all class in um, in Maryland, USA, in Columbia, Maryland. That one's also getting a lot of interest. For those who are trying to get into the all class in Vegas and it's full, they're able to come to the all class in, um, in Maryland. A lot of people are asking a little bit of the difference. I think... Like our normal live training, if you come to uh, to ones outside of Black Hat, they're five days, and with the certification and and uh, the books and the videos and things like that, that we can give the whole package. Uh, we also have an all class in Portugal. The whole package. The whole package. Don't, don't ruin the PG rating. Twenty four podcasts, two years <laughs> worth of podcasts. You've been good, Dave. Don't do it now. Did you? Okay, I'm sorry. Don't do it now, Dave. Two I'm years, sorry. you've been good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Two years. Anyhow. Okay. We also have all in Portugal. And we do have a UK class, but that's already sold out. Um, whew, I think there's a few more. We'll announce them coming up on the website. You can check it out at offensive-security.com. Okay, our, also, we have um, Core. Core is, is uh, Core Security is a sponsor of ours this year. They did something cool for us. They gave us a license of their uh, Core Impact product that we're using, so we can get some uh, experience. We're going to really play heavily with the uh, social engineering part of that, and then we'll be able to talk more about that. I don't think we just got it, so we haven't really got it set up yet to to have anything else to talk about uh, of the Core social engineering part, right, Jim? Right. Right. Thank right. you for that. Right. But we will be talking about that. And we did say last time on the podcast that um, uh, Core gave us authorization to announce about their sushi party, of course. So they still have that going on. If you want anything to do with that, get in there. You need to you need to get in before the tickets go to homeless people like that one year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, was a, that was a mess. That was a fiasco. That was a fiasco. <laughs> a Vegas fiasco. Uh, Qualys. There's another company that's that's uh, sponsoring both th- events. The how or your schmoosh uh, the schmoosh the schmoosh drags back CTF. I can't even say adult anymore because you guys say it, you like ruined it for me. Right. Well, th- I think it would, like if you had a, a adult Jeopardy, what would you think that would be? That it's not for kids. Because. <laughs> because it's uh, too hard, or the questions are different, or it's just for adults. There's an age limit. Okay. I don't automatically go to the to the pornographic nature that because it says adult it has to be involving naked people. And this guy's like the most dangerous guy in the United States. <laughs> Would you stop? Well, dear God, really? You're gonna bring that up, Captain uh, HTML exploit. Captain what, Mr. Most uh, Scariest Person in the United States? Why didn't you tell us about that? No, I'm not. We're not talking about that here. No, seriously, seriously. This is the venue for that, I think. Oh, you got it. <laughs> Come on, it. Dave? Oh, sorry. I, th- I thought it was on mute. I'm sorry. No. You guys are killing me. No, no, seriously. Tell us about the dang- most dangerous man in America thing. I, I think hey, I still have the PDF here somewhere. No, you don't. Oh, dude, are you really ripping this out right now? No. This is uh, awesome. No. Oh, this Come is on, good. Chris. Do it, man. What, you what, gotta do it. what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? Tell us about it. Tell us what happened. What, what yeah, is I, it? I, I got called by a, a, a reporter that Jim put me in, in touch with, who's a, actually a very good writer. He's a nice guy. He is, actually. And he wrote a really phenomenal article um, about the book and about, you know, just did an interview with me about the book, the site, all the stuff that we're doing with SE Org. And um, 
And then he he wrote the article, handed it over to his to his editor, publishers, whatever, whoever makes the final changes, and they chose a title for the article, which was, "Is this the most dangerous man in America?" Uh-huh. <laughs> and I, you know, he asked me for a picture that was like a headshot, so I sent him a picture that I had of me sitting on the on my computer. I figured he's gonna crop it. <laughs> I figured he's gonna crop the bloody thing, and and he and he puts. He puts the picture full full page. I mean, it's like a whole page, and it's like me sitting on the porch with my dog with no socks on, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like the most ridiculous picture on earth. And then he calls me a ruffled or rumpled Chris Farley or something. I don't know the first line. <laughs> Chris Farley lookalike. No, he didn't say that. He did not say he did not say Chris Farley lookalike, you moron. I don't know. That's how I remember it. No, Send me the not, I have that's it right awesome. here. I have it right awesome. here. Awesome. S- send it over, cause, cause send it to the chat, because I'm not finding my I'm copy. I'm definitely not sending it to you. you <laughs> no, kidding? otherwise I think that's what it says. I, no, I, I'll put it on the web, and everyone can see, except for you. Good idea. I'll block Good your idea. IP. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are killing me. Anyhow, yeah, I heard about that for quite a while, so thanks much for bringing that up. No problem. That's what friends are for. Don't worry. We're going to get to the book writing that you did in a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so uh, Qualys is another great sponsor for the uh, events this coming up soon at uh, at Vegas. Qualys did the same thing. They gave us a, a license that we can use of their product uh, so we can do some scans when we're doing pen testing and things like that. I think, Jim, you, you had a chance to kind of mess around with it. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay, so how about telling us about it? <laughs> I mean, wow, what a, what a great help you are. You're, you're just an amazing help. I... I'm so glad you're part of this podcast. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> no, it's uh, realistically though. Uh, I'm going to replace you with a table. <laughs> so yeah, they they sent us a a Qualys uh, license that that we've gotten used, and you know it's it's definitely an approachable product. You know, people don't have to be scanning experts by by any stretch of the imagination to sit down in front of it and start scanning out. Um, and and that's that's cool. It's also um, one thing I really did actually find useful about it is it doesn't come from your IP. So if you want to make sure that uh, you know you don't want your vulnerability scan to to get your your actual attack IP blacklisted, it is kind of handy to have that sort of sacrificial lamb that you can throw out there and just to see see what happens if there's any sort of a uh, shunning going on on the target network. So. So that's cool. Reporting's not bad either. Um, it has a lot of different reporting uh, templates that you can utilize to uh, give you, you know, very verbose results or real high levels. So if you know someone's looking for, uh, you know, as, as pen testers, I think that we we always we're interested in in the the core details. But uh, there's a lot of people that like to see graphs, you know, uh, shiny graphs and that sort of thing. And uh, a lot of times the, the work that we do doesn't necessarily facilitate uh, generating those sorts of, of graphics. And so we're always looking for, uh, you know, some sort of source of, of pretty looking graphs to put in there. So someone, so th- those type of people that are into that uh, get happy. And, you know, so Qualys is a nice source of, of those pretty looking graphs. So. So that's good as well. Um, I don't know, it, it does it does pretty much what you'd expect out of a vulnerability scanner, though. You know, no uh, no real problems there. You don't have to worry about keeping anything maintained or updated. So, so that can be convenient. So, ah, cool. I'm sure we'll have more as we get to to use it a little more, and talk about it maybe at the. I know we're gonna have some of those guys on the podcast in Vegas, and uh, talk a little bit about the product. So that'll be kind of cool. Yeah, okay. yeah. I I don't know. It's it's definitely something. Uh, Something that is fun to use for everybody. For everybody. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Great. It's for family fun. Jim gathers the it, kids around and they scan the neighbors. Well, that's, that's awesome. sort of what, what I was doing, you know, is I, I was just like pointing it to my neighbor's external facing IPs to see what I could find. <laughs> and that, that's how we test things. That's great. I'm going to leave that. <laughs> oh, before we get ourselves in some legal trouble, let's – um. Let's move on to the next sponsor, which uh, is kind of interesting. You know, I mean, being, identity theft kind of uh, being a hot topic and something that is occurring each day. There's a company called All Clear ID that does uh, scans for for kids, um, people who are using kids' identities for other things. You know, we see this a lot more in the news lately. People even using their own kids' social security numbers to like get credit cards or loans or something. Wait, is that illegal? 
It is illegal. No, oh, oh. I can't believe oh. I just started answering that. Wait, what? Oh. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> well, that's why I have kids. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I have kids. <laughs> well, anyhow, besides you, most people think it's illegal. And this company, All Clear ID, does scans for, <laughs> for free of uh, kids' identities to see if they're being used by malicious people to get credit or, or be used in any other malicious way. And uh, they're sponsoring the um, the kids CTF over at DEF CON, uh, one of the sponsors of that event this year too. So you, we, we'll have all the links for the sites um, up on the web. You can check out, of course, um, um, Core and Qualys. We have those links up there already and all clear. All of those are on our sponsors page and we'll have them in the podcast notes too. And uh, we're appreciative of all their support. And we can't forget the EFF. Because without the EFF, I don't think any of this stuff would be happening. Actually, I know it. I don't just think it. I know it. Those guys keep us out of jail, keep us clear, make sure we're doing everything right, and um, really worked on a lot of things this year. We mentioned we had a premier target uh, that we're working with, and we got the contracts back. Everything's good there. Um, EFF really helped facilitate that, so we knew that we can hand them a, a, a good legal document that would keep everybody safe. So... Um, we're we're very appreciative of of their support too. Okay, what else we want to talk about? A couple of the questions that came in about the CTFs. Um, do we want to talk about prizes at all, or do we not care about talking about that right now? We don't care about prizes. We don't care. Most doesn't yeah. care. P- people people are going to sign up and do the contest regardless of the prize. That is true. Yeah. Oh, we can give them a box of cereal or something. A box of cereal? <laughs> I would actually stay for a box of cereal. Would you really? Yeah. yeah. You want to join? You want to be one of the, on the kids' CTF, Dave? I mean, if I get a box of cereal, but it's got it's got to be like Raisin Bran Crunch. That's my favorite. Oh, no, 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 no. It's something with marshmallows. No, it's Raisin Bran Crunch. Oh, it's for kids, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. We just lost, like, listeners left and right on this podcast. Chris, you're always worried about that. I mean, if they don't like it, they can go somewhere else. Yeah, the they- Nielsen ratings are way down right now. Our Nielsen ratings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I, you know, I was on. Uh, you guys ever hear of um, uh, Greg Greenberg, no. uh, Mad no. Money? You know the Mad no. Money guy? No. Mad Money? No. no. That's for like Mad Cow, right? Never heard no. about it. No. Definitely not Mad Cow. Mad Money. Who? Mad Money. Is that guy Kramer. that screams and stuff? Kramer. Yeah, he screams. Yeah, yeah. yeah they got a web show over at that. Um, at that place on Wall Street called The Street, and uh, I was just interviewed by the guy Greg Greenberg. I went I went into New York City, went on their show, and uh, had an interview about uh, hacking and social engineering and how it's being used against people today. It was kind of cool. I did he call you one of the most dangerous mans in the world? He didn't. No. Okay. No, just America. But he didn't. No, he didn't say that either. He didn't. So you're not one of the, you're, so you're not one of the dangerous, most dangerous mans in the world. I'm not. No, okay. definitely. I am so far from being dangerous to anybody. It's not even funny. I agree. Yeah, yeah. You should agree. So, uh, okay, what else we got? Oh, hey, social-engineer.com. We launched that site. Hey. Yeah. That's awesome stuff. It is. It's pretty awesome. I'm excited about it. So people could check that out, social-engineer.com. We had a lot, you know, one of the things that we always got requests for with our newsletters and the podcast is people sending in uh, email asking for where can they go if they wanted to get like social engineering services um, for their companies and things like that. So um, we launched that site and has some good information there. Uh, we got the training coming up soon, being worked on now. I think I feel confident enough to at least talk about that publicly, the social engineering pen te- penetration testing course. So uh, hopefully that will be there'll be more news on that coming up soon. But there's some information on the site about that. If it has anything involved with in order to pass the test, you have to social engineer me. I'm out. Well, no, you you are you are the test, but you're not going to know it. Oh, so that, oh that's, that's fair. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's everything we got, except for of course our our guests today, which amazingly enough are the same people that are here. Um, you know what I saw this morning, that's, guys? that's not true. I mean, Devin, oh, I, I thought you meant in every podcast. Never mind. No, no, the same <laughs> people that are here right now. Okay, I thought you meant like prior podcasts, so Dookie wouldn't be here, you know. Dookie. 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 You should really invite that Dookie guy on sometimes. Yeah, yeah, we should. <laughs> to like him a lot. 
We should get we should get Dookie on. I don't even know what Dookie is. I tell you, he's like the the evil version of Dookie. He has a goatee, <laughs> that's and right. a cane, a good eye patch. Ridiculous, I tell you. Um, I saw this morning on Amazon. Let me just check the these the uh, actual section that you guys rated number one in security and encryption under computer and internet books on Amazon. I sent that over to Jim. That was pretty cool. You guys were actually rated number one there, and you haven't. The book's not even out for sale yet, is it? No, in fact, uh, our bit. So when, when's this podcast getting released, Chris? Uh, tomorrow or or Wednesday, the latest. So um, July July twelfth or thirteenth. We haven't even we haven't even uh, done any major releases with it yet. So I mean, when this gets released, um, we'll have a major campaign um, going on about talking about uh, the book and everything. So we're we're pretty excited about that. We have we've been really staying pretty quiet about everything minus uh dookie uh you know retweeting teo securities thing but other than that <laughs> that dastardly do- dookie i know I, I don't know who that d- ducky guy is but we should find him and pound yeah, him i tell you sounds like a chump yeah he does so so uh, the book already has been hailed by um by hd moore as the best guide for for the metasploit framework um and that's pretty cool coming from the creator of of msf and uh, so we have all the authors here: Maddie Aharoni, Devin Kearns. We'll just use his real name, Jim O'Gorman, and um, yeah, I think that's it. That's all the important authors of the book that we need to talk about. That is it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So Dave, you and I will interview the authors of the book. No problem. Okay. Ah, uh, come on! I know that bothered you. <laughs> and of course, and of course, Dave. We love Dave. Oh uh, yeah, I'm here. So let me ask. I'm going to start with Mutz. Mutz, mm-hmm. what was your role, kind of, in uh, writing the MSF book? Uh, how, what, how did you get? How did, were you involved in this whole process? Well, uh, the whole the whole concept of the book came um, from the Metasploit Unleashed wiki. Um, at the time, we were thinking of uh, setting up a, a, perhaps a Metasploit course or some Metasploit documentation. And um, and then came the wiki, and then what happened is that the authors, uh, which essentially the core authors were were uh, Duki, uh, Devin, uh, Jim, and I, um, decided that we we wanted to go ahead and um, write a book. So um, I gathered everyone together. We brainstormed for a bit. We we tried to figure out how what the best way uh, to approach this would be. Um, of course, Metasploit being a, a problematic uh, topic to write about as it shifts and changes so frequently. So one of the things that we had to discuss and, and figure out is how do you write a book that doesn't get outdated in you know two months? Um, and that was it, basically. From there, from there on, um, the team just took it ahead and, and steamrolled, even though it, it did take quite a long time, didn't it? Yeah, yeah buddy. How long? A year and a half. A year and a half. I was going to ask, Dave, how long? Yeah, a year and a half? That's a long time. Yeah, it took about a year and a half to write. We had a, a lot of large rewrites, um, you know, because Metasploit does does change so frequently. But, you know, the, I think the way that we all structured it, um, we wanted to get to the foundation, as, as Mutz kind of alluded to, getting the foundation of, of Metasploit, the insides of it, how it works. So even if something new comes along, you're not out of date. And uh, that was one of our primary goals, and I think we succeeded in doing it. So, you know, because I've been reading the book um, in my advanced copy, haha, to all you people listening, and, um, and I, that's one of the things I did notice. Like, it wasn't so specific, it wasn't, of course it was specific, I'm not meaning it that way, but it wasn't so suspif- suspif- <laughs> suspific. Yeah, suspific. Suspific? Yes, suspific. 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 Wow, that word has just left my brain. That if you, if you, um, you know, if you did another- say it. You did say suspific. I did. Yeah, suspific. Did I did. I said specific. <laughs> specific. You want to try that again just to make sure? Yeah, yeah. you want to go again. Specific. There you go. Thank you. That was a tongue twister for me for some reason. Man, now the word specific is in my head. <laughs> specific. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Okay, I'm going to move on to some questions that I had for each of you guys. Um, so, uh, Ducky. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ducky. Ducky, or the Dukester. Uh, what What do you say is the uh, hardest part for you, and when involved when you were involved in writing the book? What was the hardest part for you? 
I'd say accepting criticism. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Like from the editors, because when you write something, you think it's the best you can possibly do and it makes sense, and then it comes back and it's all like a big sea of red. So, l- did so. you ever get something back? Like, um, because this happened to me too. Like, when you get, like, this, to- this chapter totally stinks, you need to rewrite it. Did you ever get something back like that? Pretty similar to that. Yeah, that's okay. A, that's a bitter pill to swallow. <laughs> yes, <'cause>. it is. <laughs> <laughs> when you spend like 18 hours writing a couple paragraphs and then you send a whole chapter back after a week and they tell you it stinks. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, that really sucks. Yeah. Hey, Dave, what, what about you? What, what was the hardest part for you in, in uh, writing the book? Well, see, my, my role was kind of like organization, I guess. So keeping trying to keep everything on track, having the same tone to everything. So... You know, having, you know, four different editors all coming in to one, you know, I'd go in and try to make the feel and the sound of it uh, kind of the same. So that was that was a lot of the most challenging, you know, parts for me was was really trying to keep on theme for what we're trying to do. And, and everybody did a great job. And I think after we got through the first, uh, you know, few chapters, we were all pretty much spot on with what we were doing. So it got a lot easier after that. But but for me, it was, keep, I guess, keeping everything organized, um, keeping the revisions. I mean, you, you know, you have four people sending stuff back and forth all the time, making sure that you have that exact version. Um, you know, it, it, it became a little bit tricky. Interesting. Yeah. And Jim, what about you? What was the hardest part for you in, in writing? I, I think a, a big challenge on this was um, tracking uh, Metasploit's SVN the, the whole time, watching for something that, to come across that will say, you know, oh, crap, we got to redo this section or this is no longer valid or this is something that we definitely have to add. I, I can think of more than a few times where we were going back through and then rerunning through examples and finding um, finding examples that just were totally not working any longer. You know, and we'd have to change a script or, or something we used to be able to point to. We no longer can. We now have to host ourselves, that, that sort of thing. So. Well, the conversion from Backtrack 4 uh, to Backtrack 5 mid-swing also hurt us a bit, too. <laughs> yeah, everything on the universe changed for you guys mid-writing. <laughs> That's funny. Didn't even think about that. Yeah, that had to be a big a big thing. Um, J- Mutz, what about you? Was there, was there a really difficult part for you in, in uh, writing the book? Yeah, managing Dave. <laughs> hey, that was easy. That was easy? Easy? Really? <laughs> wow, I don't know how that could ever be classified as easy. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that would be probably I mean, just just because I wanted our books to have, you know, like fart jokes and stuff like that on there, I mean, I don't, I don't see what was wrong with that, but that's fine. Yeah, I can always tell what chapter Dave wrote because it starts with hugs and then moves on, <laughs> you know. So I can always tell which chapters were Dave's and then which were... Dave wanted to have a whoopee cushion in the book, so the minute you open it, it like goes... <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine that actually being something Dave would want. Of course, you, know, you so have, have to. <laughs> so I had to like calm him down and you know, beat him into submission. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that sounds like the hardest job out of all of it. I mean, worse than the revisions, worse than changing. Oh like, yeah, you know, you can you can write a book a few thousand pages, big deal. But managing Dave, whew. yeah, Oof. man, tough that, one, man. That's tough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what about the uh, chapters? So what's um? Let's go in a different order here. Um, Jim, what was your favorite chapter in the book? Whether you the wrote appendix. it or not, the, the appendix. appendix. Yeah. <laughs> and now, no, um, I, I stole. That's I. I forget whose joke that was. That was totally De- that was Devin's joke. Guys. That was Dookie. Yeah. That was yeah. Devin. Devin. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Dookie. Sorry, Dookie. That's all right. <laughs> I stole your joke. Um, <laughs> man, you know Devin's a man of very few words, and now you stole like the last yeah. three he had for the day. That's what makes it so good. <laughs> you know, curses. <laughs> Crap! That's one word left. You vile villain. <laughs> Uh, no, really, I you know the the book, the chapter on interpreter I think is is really good simply because that's a that's a complex uh, portion of of Metasploit and it's one that people need to make sure that they understand because ideally they'll be spending a lot of time in there, a lot of interaction in there. So that's cool. Uh, how, and uh, Duke, how about you? What was uh, what was your favorite chapter? My favorite would be the porting exploits chapter, of mm. course. I like that one too. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's like one of my hobbies, and it's just nice to have exploits you can port over to the framework. I mean, that's just so convenient to do that. And if more people did it, we'd have more toys to play with. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's cool. And Dave, what about you? Um, I actually have two. So can I can I do two or just one? Uh, you know. Do mine. Do mine as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. You can do yours and, and Maddie's. Go ahead. 
All right. So I, th- I think for me, the, the, the two that resonate the most, uh, resonate the most is um, the introduction into pen testing because we, we leverage you know, uh, the penetration testing execution standard and kind of give a foothold into the basics of penetration testing and then throughout the chapters, you know, build you up. So for me, you know, being able to elaborate what a true penetration test really should be was, was a fun chapter for me, and that's, that's fairly non-technical. Um, and then I have to say the, la- the second one for me would be the, the simulated pen test, uh, just because it, it, it uses everything that you've built in all of the rest of the chapters in order to really, um, you know, be successful in that simulated pen test. So one of the last chapters, you know, you, you build your own uh, environment, uh, and everything that you've learned from, from prior, you're actually going to use within um, that actual uh, chapters, so you actually get to recreate everything that you've learned. Uh, so for me, I think it was probably one of the best uh, for me. You know, I liked. I really liked the uh, chapter on set because it talked about social engineering. <laughs> <laughs> I, obviously, I couldn't say my favorite uh, chapter was was set. Um, okay, I was set and fast that. track. <laughs> yeah, the set and fast track. Chapter. The two were set and fast track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I figured, Dave, you would say your favorite part was the beginning bio about you. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> no uh, um, you know the 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 set and fast track ones. I mean, what we kind of did with with a lot of the chapters um, is get to kind of scenario based um, attacks. So, like in the social engineer toolkit, you know, you have different scenarios that you actually leverage in order to become successful in a social engineer attack. You know, and uh, we kind of kind of build you off in there. So, yeah, I mean, I definitely like the uh, the um, the set chapter. I mean, obviously, I, I happen to write it, so. But, no, I like that chapter though too. That set, the problem, even I had, including set in, in my book, was that was also ever changing. I mean, right. you come out with like an update every fifteen minutes, so it was it was almost impossible to keep uh, set up to date. But I thought you did a good job of kind of encapsulating the main features of it. Yeah, you know, I realized that same thing too. And in, in, in like Metasploit, um, you know, we. I wanted to get out of that the same same type of effect, which is learning how set works uh, because it leverages Metasploit so well. Uh, so really, the chapter itself gives you the understanding, the foundation of how to use set and where you go from there. So it really started to kind of morph into that and doesn't really go into every single niche and cranny of, of set because that's obviously going to change over a period of time. Um, so I really try to try to get it so that, you know, even a year from now, um, you can definitely still be able to leverage and use every example um, that's on there. So that's kind of our goal for the whole book, not just the, the social engineer toolkit one. Yeah, that, then that's a hard, I would imagine that's probably the hardest part um, as we already discussed with the changes, but that's probably the hard, one of the hardest parts of writing a book about software or technology in general. And what was what was unique uh, working with No Starch is, you know, they're, they're editors, they're publishers and stuff like that, and they don't understand this stuff. So they were taking a completely different look than what we were looking at it for. And I think I rewrote the browser exploitation uh, chapter four different times uh, completely, like <laughs> from scratch, you know, uh, just because it wasn't making sense from wasn't clicking. Uh, so for us, I mean, I think, you know, getting that feedback kind of how, how, how Ducky said before, Ducky said before, um, <laughs> You know, well, I think I think that was kind of eye-opening for us to kind of bring it down to that level, so that you know, again, it gradually built you up from from the beginning to end. What would you guys think? I think you said niche. What instead of niche? <laughs> I said I'm supposed to say niche. Niche is right. Niche. No, it isn't. It's niche. No, it's niche. <laughs> well, you call Dookie Dookie, so you know, dookie, so it's, it's not really. A... No, but actually, actually, uh, actually. <laughs> I hate you guys so much, by the way. <laughs> no, man, I'm just saying. I don't Sorry, understand. That... I, it sounds the same to me. I mean, it sounds yeah. like Dookie to me. <clears throat> dookie and Dookie sounds the same? I mean, 99.9% the same, yeah. Maybe you need, yeah, the the D and the E in the end. Everything else in between that, is Chris, different. That would not be 99.9%. That would be but, more okay, like but, that, let's, not, let's not distract him. Poor guy, he was in the middle of a roll. Continue. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Anytime now. <laughs> Are you talking about me? Oh, oh wow. Gosh. Dave has completely lost this podcast. <laughs> completely lost. <laughs> Are you okay, Dave? Are you okay? What? Are you What's working a here? lot? Are you Wait, working what? a lot, Dave? I am Operation working. Rail Track succeeded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dave has been owned. <laughs> Human buffer overflow success. <laughs> that, that was that was kind of weak again, Chris. I just let you know that. Yeah, you know what? You know what's weak? You know what's weak? Was that? I mean, guys, would you concur with that? The human buffer overflow thing. I mean, weak. No, I'll tell you what's weak. Weak is sending your kids to try to get Chris. There you go. Why is that weak? I'm getting him broken in early. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Anyhow, if we can move back to the book. Yes. If that's okay with you, Dave. Is that okay <laughs> with you, Dave? I mean, as long as I'm not human buffer overflowed or whatever, sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, you are, but that's okay. You just don't oh. know it. You just don't know it. All right. Gotcha. Okay. okay, no problem. No problem. So, uh, Dookie. Yes. Yes. Where can you buy the book? Amazon, No Starch, fine bookstores everywhere. Fine bookstores. <laughs> what about not... <laughs> What about not fine bookstores? The occasional shady bookstore will probably okay. have it too. Yeah, maybe adult bookstores. Adult bookstores. <laughs> yeah. We'll also be we'll also be doing. It's not a um, book for kids, is it? It, it? it is a book for kids. It's a book for all ages. You're telling no, me that it. I think it's only for adults. You you'll find it in adult bookstores. So you're telling me that that a teenager can't read this book? Yeah, I'm talking about kids. You know, like the kids CTF between eight and and uh, things. So yeah, probably eight is too. Too young, so in adult bookstores you can find it. Between eight and sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you oh, start, eight and start, ten. Why don't you stop mentioning adult bookstores? Well, because that's where you'll find the book, isn't it? You'll find no, no. You'll find it also at Barnes and Nobles and Borders, I would assume, which are bookstores for all ages. I that, see. Well, probably in the adult section then. Well, that's possible. <laughs> that's probably, or or I would imagine in the technology <laughs> section. You know, programming. In the adult technology section. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> You know much. It's a rare, it's a rare occasion where I'm beginning to love Jim more than you. <laughs> and then Jim. Well, that's gonna, because I'm not talking very much right now. That's right. Know? That's right. And then when you do, I'm going to start loving Dave more than you and us <laughs> together. And that is just going to ruin my universe. So I just don't know how to deal with that. I just Did you actually know. say you're going to love me more than? than really? What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, hmm. you're you're the only if one. If I not, talk, if not, I talk. More. You're not. You're the only uh, one not making fun of me about the adult thing. So you know. I did. No, I, I absolutely made fun of you beforehand. If you go through the podcast, I mean, I, I mean, I was. I think I'm the one. I actually must started it, and then I just kind of piggybacked on it. So I've been definitely making fun of you on that. Yeah. I great. think everybody has. Chris, yeah, everybody's no, been kind not, of kind of piling on this. Not, In fact, not, I think I, not yeah, Dookie. Everybody. Not Dookie. Dookie has. <laughs> no, Dookie's been doing it too. No, Dookie has not. <laughs> Maybe Ducky has, but there's probably some guy named Ducky in the UK that's making fun of me right now. But that scoundrel Ducky again. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how much is the book going to be? I'm curious. Um, you know, I wish you would you would ask me these these ahead of time. Why? Why? I'm to ask you ahead of time. You don't know. Just, you don't know the is, cost of your book. It is going to be. I know how much my book is. Forty nine ninety five is regular price, but yep. Amazon is selling it for thirty thirty eight, and we're going to have that discount code thing. Yep. Too. And in fact, it'll be it'll be released by the time of this podcast. So if you go yeah. to nostarch.com slash metasploit.htm you can uh, enter a promotional code for the next two weeks um, of Red Team which will give you 40% off the uh, original price the and then plus two you get the, the ebook copy of it as yes well. right you get away. the ebook copy that's yeah, awesome immediately yeah. Yeah, that's a steal that, DRM that's, free that's a big deal to me at least because I, I much prefer electronic copies over the printed for yeah, the searching and purposes and it's DRM free too which is nice yeah, yeah. So if I bring my um, my print copy to Vegas, will you guys all sign it? I'll sign your no. digital copy. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what I want. That's why I specifically said print because I knew that one of you would would have picked up and made fun of the whole digital versus print thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just didn't think it would be uh, et tu Jimmy. Well, I told you if I start talking more. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So let's talk a little bit about HDM here because. Um, you know, HDM made a pretty powerful H comment. HDM or, uh, HD, or more. HD more? Or HD, HDM. HDM. HD more, same thing, no? It's HD, HD more and his initials are HDM. Do you think anyone on earth doesn't know that when I say HDM, I meant HD more? In you this context, <laughs> in this podcast? Okay. I thought you were talking about high definition modulation, sorry. <laughs> dear God. <laughs> dear, dear God. I, I just. confused because I was like. What the hell does special modulation have to do with that book? And I was like, you know, you know, much. I just I expected more from my brother. That was awesome. Remember the days when Mutz wasn't available on our podcast? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we waited for him to come back. Yeah, yeah, great. I'm glad I postponed it for a week. Anyhow, um, HD more. Okay, to make everyone HDM. To make everyone happy, he made a pretty powerful comment that we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast about the book. That it is, uh, you can quote it exact if you want, but the essence of it was it was this is the best 
book about the Metasploit framework available out right now? Is that, is that really yeah, what considering, that con considering that the last book was like four years ago, that's not much an achievement, but I guess that's okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why you got to be so negative about it. Yeah, <laughs> thanks much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, you really, we really <laughs> should probably, I, I probably should cut that out. Tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, that, can, that, you, can you just remove that right. completely? I mean, that, that was really horrible. <laughs> can you just Musk? pretend that never happened type thing? I mean, Musk, we're trying to promote this <laughs> oh, so, so for so sales good. and stuff, and you basically say, yeah, well, you know, you could have wrote in a one page that said MSF on it, and that have been better than the four year old book. <laughs> <laughs> would have. But okay, cut it out then. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I might leave this. I, I, I'm, I'm going to leave this. I just, I, I just. <laughs> well, if, if anything else, it, it puts the uh, little That's advertisements bad. for our sponsors bad. in more context. <laughs> if, if we're going to promote out, our man. own stuff this way, I'm bummed out. Yeah, man, I'm bummed out for you. <laughs> I, I, you know, I mean, Dave, I'm really bummed out for you. Yeah, because, man, I, I got, I got to go now. You know, like. <laughs> Like I can't even. Uh, I mean, a year and a half of my life, you know, just thrown away like that. I mean, it's it's. And much well, I'm just being honest. Like he says, it's the best book out there right now. No, Great. no, what other books. No, sorry. No, his his exact words were, "It is the." Okay. Uh, hang on, I don't know his exact words offhand, but I'm, I'm getting it. Um, yeah, the best read, read. guide to the Metasploit framework. There you best go. Best guide to the Metasploit yeah. framework. So it's saying anything like it, it, it kicks MSF. Unleashed, it kicks everybody anything that's ever been written about in Metasploit's butt. So that's that's pretty good. I right? think that's I think that's a great quote. I mean, yeah. to, get, to get that from no way Mutz is being so down, uh, Debbie Downer on all this. I, I'm not being Downer. I'm just being realistic. You know what else has been written? You have MSFU. You have another two old books from Metasploit two and Framework two, and that's it. Still, you have MSFU, and to me, that's a great comment because you have the creator of the tool. Like that'd be like somebody else writing a book about backtrack and you endorsing it and saying that is the best book about backtrack out there. That, that's a, that'd be be that's the best book about backtrack five out there when there's no other books of backtrack five. <laughs> but he could have said he could have <laughs> HD. I, I give up. I give up. Months is just for me. You know, HD, HD could have said this book isn't that great. I don't want to quote on it. But instead, he decided to come. And frankly, out I was afraid of that. Yeah, me too. I would have been afraid. I, I didn't expect it, but if he had done that, man, we would have been doomed. Heck, man. You know, I was afraid when I gave Mitnick my book and he was going to read it and if he's going to come back and say, this stinks, it's got nothing to do with SE. So I, I was happy to have him quote on the cover. To me, okay, okay, easy. okay. Get over it. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to stay on the subject for another 15 minutes. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sad for you, Dave. Thanks, Chris. I, I mean, I appreciate, you know, I got one good friend out of this. Well, I mean, I really feel that. I mean, when I read that quote, I was happy for you guys. Thanks, buddy. I was happy. Thanks, Chris. No problem. That's awesome. I was happy. <laughs> I, I was real happy. Even, Man, even for, Manny's not though. Even for much, I was happy. You know, since he's listed as an author on the book. So. Long awkward silence. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> awkward at this yeah. point in time. I don't Crickets. even know where to go. I mean, I wanted to talk about that quote. And I wanted to talk about you know. Go ahead, I, talk about it. Yeah, I, 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 I wanted to ask how it made you all feel, but now I think I know. So <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not going to ask much, but I wanted to ask like you know how uh, Jim and and Devin and and Dave thought about that quote. Yeah, let's just leave. Let's just leave Mutz out of this for now. <laughs> 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 oh man! <laughs> just right, no, no. Just All right, let's, let's let's get back to serious mode here. There, that's more like it. <laughs> so go so ahead. No. Tell us all about HD more. I, I don't know all about HD more. No, one thing one thing we could say is that um, you know from the very beginning of of the book, I mean HD more was was nothing but but responsive and. Um, Really was uh, beneficial and helpful into into some of the early stages of the book, and then throughout the forward and everything else. Uh, so, I mean, he's he's such a nice guy. Um, you know, I think all of us can say nothing but good things about um, him and, and what he's done for us uh, when it comes to the book. Uh, so we're we're really happy about that. And Jim, I think it'd be good to talk to you about when we first started the book. We kind of had a mantra given to him because we were all a little bit nervous about the book, right? So what 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 would you what you you had the conversation with him. Why don't you go through the history of that? I know it's in the book, but it's a good way to to really lead where our, our rationality and our thoughts were behind when we were creating the book. Well, it, if I remember it right, what what had happened was uh, some time ago, like right right at the beginning of of everything, um, there was something that I was documenting uh, that just 
wasn't working right. I think it actually had to do with persistence within within Metasploit. And I hit him up on IRC, and we were chatting about it for a while. And you know, it, it, this is like twelve thirty at night. He's online. He's in IRC. Um, I bring something up, and less than fifteen minutes later, there's SVN commits happening where something's being changed and corrected. So, you know, to to meet what our what we needed to do. You know, so I mean that that in and of itself was just an amazing response. You know, how do you get that sort of that level of service in in you know darn near anything? Um, and then when we were talking about you know what the goals that were and, and how we were going to approach it and everything, we uh, and made the comment to him that you know well, I, I really hope the the book comes out good. And uh, HD's response to that was, well, then make it good. And it, it kind of reminded me of the whole, you know, offsec try harder, you know, mentality, you know. And I think that it's somewhat telling that, you know, you have a few very successful uh, projects in the security world that have that, that, you know, well, don't, don't hope, you know, don't, don't wish for it, you know, just go out there and do it. And, and make it good, you know, and if it's not what you want, you just try harder. You just keep doing it until it is to that point where it's something that that is what you were looking for. Um, you know, and, and I think that the the level of success that, that Metasploit has obtained, you know, is is in large part due to that that unwillingness to compromise uh, that HD exhibits, you know, in, in that that approach. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Jim, yeah. for bringing that back around. You know, one of the things I was thinking is uh, that we never really talked about. We should have done this in the beginning, but um, uh, what, what's the goal of the book? I mean, what's the uh, – when you guys were writing this, there actually had to be some thought in your mind. It obviously wasn't just let's collect some stuff, um, you know, about no, that was that was pretty much it. It was just collect some stuff. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a how-to. <laughs> just fill a gaping hole in the market. That's it. That's it, huh? <laughs> yeah. It, you know, there it was tough because with putting this together, you're catering to so many different audiences. Uh, you know, you have people that are brand new to Metasploit, have never used it before. They're sitting there intimidated by the the MSF console. You know, they 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 don't know what it's going to do. They're afraid to type in anything, and and so you, you have to take care of those people. But at the same time, you have the other end of the spectrum of people that have been using Metasploit for a long time. They 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 write their own modules. They do their own exploits. They yep. They want to know, you know, how to an API reference, you know, for you know, I want to make this call. How do I do it? You know, how how do you make them happy while making the the total Metasploit newbie happy? Yep. You know, and that's that's very very difficult. Um, you know, and then if I think if you look at the the chapter listing of the book, you see a wide range of topics, and I think that while the entire book is approachable, uh, one of the things that it we didn't really have an option. I mean, we talked a lot about how quickly things in Metasploit changes. So if you did something silly, like gave a straight API reference in the book, uh, that would be outdated, you know, before it ever hit print, much less, you know, the year and a half that was spent writing this thing. So what we did was we covered, you know, how to find that information out yourself, you know, how to go into the source, you know, where where to look to find that that information. How do you find those API calls? How do you go through and find existing modules that are doing something similar that you can just gank some code from it and then adapt it to your needs so that you're not starting from scratch? Uh, you know, it's it's trying to give people the tools that they need in order to find the answer themselves rather than answering their question directly. And I, I think that that's how we try to approach uh, making everybody happy because I think that if, if we wind up giving that whole spectrum of users those tools that they need, uh, then in the long run, they're going to be okay. Yeah, very cool. Very nice. Now, hold on. I got a special guest we're going to bring in here. Hold on one second. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? I'm not telling you. <laughs> did you get Greg Evans to, to come on? I did. I did. <laughs> At last. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That'd be awesome. <laughs> HD, how you doing? This is the whole gang here at SC Org Podcast. I got Dave and, and Jim and Mutz and Dookie. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, hey what's up, man? How you doing, hey, man? Uh, Hi there. Maybe, but uh, just opened an office in Austin, so I'm still like getting tables put in and walls put up and that kind of stuff. So it's been insane. Oh man, it's awesome that you open. Did you open up a brand new shop out there? 
Yep, uh, we finally actually we've had a uh, you know quite a few people in town working in the Metasploit team. We actually have a real Metasploit office now. So the oh, that's awesome. Team, that's a place to go. So how big are you guys now? You know, um, the team itself is probably close to twelve these days. We can count everyone who actually contributes, um, and you know we're growing crazy fast. We're probably going to double every year going forward. That's incredible. We were I mean, just talking about you behind your back. Well, it won't be behind his back for long because <laughs> it will be public on the podcast. So, you know. <laughs> I'll be right saying I'm the most bastard not joining your podcast, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> no, no, we weren't. We were talking about your quote that's on the cover of the MSF book and, uh, you know, how, how awesome it is to have a quote like that on a book about Metasploit. So it was like perfect timing that you got a hold of me and said you can come on. And about all the assistance that you gave us in writing the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, guys, did hard work, man. Writing books is never fun. Everyone all thinks writing books is, you know, it's easy as writing a blog or this or that, but the amount of sheer pain that you have to go through to get a book out the door is ridiculous. So huge props to anybody that wants to write a book and can actually get the book out, and I'll never do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's about how we feel right now, actually. <laughs> that, that covers it. Yeah, you, you, you summed it up. <laughs> we never want to do a book again. <laughs> Wow, we could have done a five-minute podcast. HD, sum up the book. <laughs> Pain, suffering, ow, ow, joy, ow, and ow, never ow, do it again. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Uh, no, uh, no, I really appreciate all the hard work that you, you um, helped us with the book, man, and the forward and everything else that, that came along with it was just, uh, was just awesome. I mean, uh, everybody loved it. So we can't thank you enough. Hey, it's nice to see like a team that actually cares enough about not just getting a book out the door, but also getting involved with the project. You know, keeping track of updates. I mean, this is the first book where the team that actually wrote it was involved with our development process and actually kind of stayed, you know, afoot. I mean, halfway through you guys writing the book, we added post modules to it and changed all of our scripts over to post modules. So, like the fact that you can talk about post modules and have a section about them and cover things like that is amazing. Um, most people who've written about Metasploit previously, especially in the you know printed dead tree form. I've just done a horrible job for keeping up with updates. By the time I get a book out, it's all already obsolete. So yep. it's one of the most challenging topics to cover because we are changing the code for three months. Um, so, you know, you guys have huge props for not just, you know, running content that was actually good and correct, but also staying on top of the constant churn of our code base. It was That's- funny. I remember I remember sitting there and uh, we're like, we're in the, the final stages of the of the book. And, uh, uh, HD's like, hey, we're about to do this. I'm like, oh no, you know. And, and <laughs> <laughs> so you know, the last minute, I'm I'm rehauling out of the the um, I, was, I think it was MSF Venom. Uh, was it? We had the chapters locked in already, and uh, MSF Venom came out, and uh, so you know, we basically wrote certain portions of the chapter to to include uh, the MSF Venom side of the house. So, but uh, I mean, it's just. I mean, keeping up with with you guys is is insane because you're just always working on on it continuously. I mean, it's 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 impressive and, and scary how much uh, work goes into to Metasploit. And uh, you know, we were kind of talking about before how we tried to make the book um, not about learning every nook and cranny about Metasploit uh, because that would get dated quickly, but really trying to understand how Metasploit works and how you can learn it, and then from there building your knowledge on it because we we recognize that it's going to be out of date. Um, you know, quick. Uh, so that's why we wrote the book with the intent that even if it's, you know, MSO 8067, which is, you know, five years old or four years old. Um, it will never die, though. It's never, yeah, it will never die. We still get in with that, don't we? Yep. <laughs> that one system, it still happens to be there. But uh, no, I mean, you know, and that's, that's what we really try to get through. And uh, I mean, you know, Jim, why don't you tell them about, I don't, I don't know if you, you've read this part, uh, HG, but why don't you tell them a, a quick recap of, of why we were so, uh, I guess, hard on ourselves with the book. Remember? Yeah, I, I don't know if you remember this so much, HD, but back when we were first starting to put together the whole uh, Metasploit Unleashed, you know, which which eventually kind of mutated into uh, this book, was I was hitting you up on IRC one evening, and we were after you corrected some issues on persistence um, things for us. Uh, which I thought was kind of amazing that, you know, it's 1230 at night and you're making SVN commits for us. But uh, we started talking about the book. And one of the things that, that I said to you was, you know, I hope the, the book winds up being good. And your response was, you know, well, then make it good. And I, I thought that that <laughs> sums things up really well. You know, I I'm so supported, by the way. <laughs> no, it was, you, you know what? You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of like HD and Mutz might be brothers. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's exactly how much treats me on things, you know? Well, no, but I mean, I think it really represented, you know, our Stop. what our drive was for it. I mean, we, we took that to heart, and we, we tried to make it as, as awesome as it possibly would and make it not suck. And uh, we'll see. I mean, the, the reviews are still still to be uh, determined, but uh, we think we did a pretty good job on it. 
Well, and that's why we were also really on pins and needles when we sent it over to HD. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, a year and a half of work, and he could have. I yeah. honestly, I honestly, not no joke. I remember sending it to him for the first time, and and I, I sat there with my phone in front of my face, waiting for the green light on the Android to blink to see if he had responded back. And I was like <laughs> so nervous about it because he's like, well, if this sucks, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to go into a corner and like work at McDonald's because I'm done. You know, you I, know? Wish, <laughs> I, I wish I had known that you sent it to him because I would have called HD and paid him money to email you back to him and told you that he wiped his butt with it. That's how bad it was. I would, I would have paid him money for that. You know, good money. You could have made a lot of money. The feedback wasn't that much better. Like, if you remember, the initial feedback was like, yeah, this is okay, but here's five, you know, 90 things that you didn't cover or missed or whatever in the first draft. Yeah. But I do remember happened. that. And it's an early draft. That was the point. That's the whole point of doing the first draft and early things like that. Yep. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he came back the first time and, and it was great. I mean, you know, I saw exactly where he was going with what type of information we were missing, and uh, we tried to incorporate that into there. So, I mean, I thought it went. I thought it went pretty well. Yeah, so, definitely got the process of the cross where it's much more process focused now, not so much about every nitty gritty detail. And that's thing that people try to, you know, they generally kind of lose focus when they're going through a textbook and becoming like a glorified manual. And this is more of kind of an you know overall perspective viewpoint on pen testing and some tools you can use, but the tools really do take the backseat to the process and methodology. Yep. You know, and we covered everything from from vulnerability scanners. Uh, obviously, next uh, next pose is it. So, let me ask a question because obviously we're a big uh, next pose shopper. Is it next pose or next pose? Next pose. You know, even within Meta, even in Rep Seven, you still get people calling one thing or another. And the next pose team all calls it next pose, and all the new guys, especially the Europeans, like, oh, next pose. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care as long as it's spelled right. <laughs> so all the European guys sound French. I'm just curious. Yeah, every one of them. <laughs> the French ones do. The French and the Belgian guys do, but not the rest. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we try to cover. We try to cover. Um, all of those. Uh, so you know, we got you got Nexpose in there. Uh, we also got a lot of the the answer tools like Karma Exploit and and uh, Fast Track, Track and Set and stuff like that. So try to incorporate the tools that actually integrate into uh, you know the Metasploit framework, which is really about you know at least what I see you know Metasploit being about is being able to leverage you know an entire framework uh, to to augment certain tasks that you might have, and you know. Um, that's where we really try to get with it is really trying to promote not just uh, the exploit portions of, of Metasploit, but the actual framework itself, uh, which is, is so powerful. Uh, I think it's missed a lot of, uh, of what you can actually leverage Metasploit for. Awesome. Hey, uh, hey Steve, what's, what do we got going on in, uh, in, in, in the upcoming of, of uh, Metasploit? What's going on with, uh, with Pro Express and, and what's in the future? Uh, we're in the last week of the last sprint before you feature freeze for the next release. So the team here is just 100 miles an hour. And, you know, it, not, on top of that, I'm making people kind of the crazy things, like present at a conference tomorrow that we're putting together the last minute and this and that. So it's, it's all pretty crazy. But we've got a ton of new features. We've got, I think, in the Dennis Play Pro side, we'll probably count most of the features for dev. Most of the framework and rest development tends to be kind of the supporting features that go under Pro. So if we add something like, you know, most recently we added John Ripper passage cracking built directly into Metasploit. So after you've done a hash anywhere inside Metasploit, it stores it in a, in a credential table. You can now just basically fill your module and then basically automatically brute force with all the simple hashes for you. Um, and it's a really, you know, it's not meant to be the comprehensive brute force, but it's meant to kind of shake out the weak passwords. You can then replay those in clear text as opposed to replay the hash. So if you want to replay like a, you know, a layman hash, but against a different service like POP3 doesn't support internal authentication, that's how you go about doing it. So... It's little things like that that's about his ability, about just kind of making things, you know, easy and obvious. Yep. So we added that feature to the Metasploit framework side. That went over the weekend. And then we added the pro side of that, um, I think, this morning. It finally got committed. And then that's going to go out as part of the next release. Cool. So we tend, to, we tend to build all the individual components, all the different bits and features we need in the open source side. And then we build out the automation and all the fun, like, you know, fancy images and graphs reporting and that kind of stuff on the pro side. Cool. That's great, yeah, I was playing with I was playing with John the Ripper this morning. Works really well. I'm impressed. Well, the new uh, yeah, the new John Ripper stuff is awesome, and then the new uh, yeah. SSL interpreter. That thing's that thing's bad to the bone. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that was like <laughs> that was another like two days of work that we we have a uh, hundred and fourteen features going into this release. So that's kind of a footnote of one of them. It's not even not even that's not even the main feature. That's like a little supporting piece of some other big features. <laughs> it's been an insane dev cycle. Our, our development cycle of this is literally two and a half months. We did 104 features. I think our sorry, 114 features. The last release was only like one feature really, which is redoing the whole such back end. And our normal releases are close to 55 features. So we've got the team is about to fall over dead here, but they're having fun. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. 
Well, That's awesome. You have to give our congrats to the team too, you know, because the, all the support and all the hard work and everything that they they give, it's definitely appreciated. Oh, well, I mean, those guys. Oh are, yeah. We try to take care of them. Um, we've got the entire team coming to town. We've got a couple guys that are still remote. Everyone's flying in basically tonight and this morning. This is the first time a lot of the team members have even like seen each other. Um, I mean, we often hire people without ever seeing their face. So it's kind of fun actually getting the whole team in town. Everyone kind of sees each other for the first time in person. Uh, so that's happening basically today and tomorrow. <laughs> We've got people like, you know, Bandit and, and the center, and they got those guys in the sweat team are finally meeting everybody else that's involved. Uh, so it, it's going pretty well, though. We've got uh, hopefully enough um, budget coming out that we can actually start hiring, you know, hiring, expanding the team. And most of our work still goes back to the open source tree. I want to say like 90% plus of our development is really focused on the open source side. It's really a question of how we expose that and how we do the UI work and, all the bells and whistles to make it work properly on the pro side for utility. Well, I know we uh, we have several licenses of pro here in the uh, organization, so uh, you know, hats off to you for everything that you've been doing with it, man. It's been awesome. I appreciate it. I mean, one thing or kind of one of what the funny shit that comes up is as more of our competitors try to integrate with Metasploit, do things around it, they keep taking really terrible approaches. Like we've had some customers, like a press release went up this morning saying one of our you know competitors on the VA side now has like you know right click to run exploits and Metasploit for the product. It's ridiculous. It's like not only has this company never been able to go to the project, but how they're doing it goes against every piece of DeLonline philosophy we've done from day one. It's just one of those things where it's not that we're trying to break our competitors' features. It's they're doing it wrong, and they won't work with us. Yeah. So it's kind of fun thing. That's we're, we're always uh, in the fun mode right now where we're building new commercial products, building out all these new features, and our competitors then picking us out of our SD entry, competing against us with them. Um, and all we, you know, that's fine because we can run faster than they can. And that's kind of how we, we do things is, you know, we can keep giving away code free in the BSD side because we can all keep adding it faster than they can copy it. Well, I think uh, Metasploit is a great example of an open source product having a commercial end that's just done right. You know, there's been no sellout. There's been no anything. It's just it, it's, it should be really a model that anyone else that tries to do that, that, same, that same goal should follow. And the challenge is most people want to say, here's my open source product, here's what it does, and it's static. And then you try mm-hmm. to commercialize the features on it, but they're not putting anything back in the open source side. And so you've got your whole open source user base getting upset that the new features aren't getting exposed in the open source side, and they start building out commercial products that sit on top of it. Um, you know, we kind of take a different approach to that. We try to put most of our work in the open source side, and the stuff we do on the pro side and all of our commercial you know, stuff around that has been mostly about usability, not about individual features. So there are some features that are unique to the pro side, but it's really more about kind of how you use the entire product, how you build out actual workflow, how you, you know, <laughs> bring it into your business environment as opposed to, you know, here's a new widget, here's a new exploit. I know, so folks who try to um, sell open source content under a commercial license and sell different content and mix content up, like folks who sell custom exploit trees, things like that, mm-hmm. I think they're just always going to be on the losing end of that deal just because they can't ever really get the mix right. Um, it's a case where the second your exploit becomes public, the second your technique becomes well-known, you've now lost your commercial edge for it. And because of that, those models are really fragile and don't really work. Well, it yep. seems like whatever you're doing, you're doing it right because your growth seems to be phenomenal. So. <laughs> we're getting there. Yeah, we're, we're basically set to double every year, and we've been doing it two years already. So um, we're actually paying for the team now, which is great. So we, we pay our own expenses, pay our own bills, and we're growing. Excellent, excellent. Hey, you know, I know when, when you pinged me, you said you didn't have much time. I don't want to keep taking your time if you've got to run, but you can feel free to hang as long as you want. But if you if you got to run, it's not rude. We, we appreciate you coming on for a few minutes. Oh, yeah. And, and chatting with us. Well, thanks. So I'll hang on a little bit longer. I've got another ten minutes or so, but uh, you know, I'll I'll go in the background if you have any other questions or if anything else you want you know in, in, input on. Let me know. Yeah, no, just keep keep here, just keep yapping. We don't mind hearing about MSF and what you guys are doing at Rapid Seven. It's great. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's good stuff. It's good to see a company that, like you said, you. It's it must be hard to do the split between what's open source and commercial. So you're. Obviously, a good example of that, and the growth is is proof of that. I mean, we, we were talking before when we were down in Texas at that uh, that BOA thing that it was um, you were set to grow, like you said, double every year. That's pretty phenomenal. That's that's great growth. I mean, it tells you a lot about what the market space looks like too. Where you've got folks who've been in basically that space for a long time that aren't getting the types of customers we are, they aren't getting the types of uh, use cases we are. It's, it's you need people who actually do pen testing, who actually do the work using your product and building your product. Um, one thing that we try to do on our side is bring in people who actually use the product as our developers. So half our dev team needs to be pen testers. And no one's going to be more critical for the product than someone who's had to actually use the product as part of the pen test. Um, we make our own internal teams dog food it. We dog food it internally. What I do on the pen test side internally, 
Um, and when something we run, you know, we run into a bug or a feature or the way something works that just drives us crazy, we fix it. And there's so many folks that do software development these days that are so detached from where the software is actually being used that it's not even funny. I mean, one reason why, um, you know, David's uh, our set tool is so great is because it's written to solve a case that he actually really has. It was basically solved to basically fix the need he had at the time. And that's why all these little hacker tools and all these little um, exploit toolkits you run into for these one-off engagements are all such a good fit. It's because someone wrote them because they had the need for it at the time, not because they're trying to commercialize it or productize it or think of every feature in the sign or add ticketing to it or this or that. Um, so there's definitely something to be said about taking the folks who use your products and actually using them to build products that, that, that do that kind of work. Um, and if you look at any industry right now, you always find the best products where the people who actually use the products are the people who are doing the design. Huh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, hey, Set's very popular, too. I mean, we all love it, of course, and it seems like, well, I mean, I, I guess you can't blame Dave. He got, like, a, what, a release every, what is it now, 20 minutes, Dave? <laughs> I've already done three since we've been on the, on the podcast. But. Yeah, yeah, I know. You released, probably had three three releases <laughs> since then. <you> know? <laughs> I've never seen so many releases of a product. Someone, someone came on the channel once and asked, how many people are on the Set development team? <laughs> and I think at, at the time, you know, you didn't have much help. I know you had a couple guys doing some stuff for you, but I said, no, basically it's uh, it's Dave. And they're like, so this is what he does for work. Do you pay him to make set? I said, I don't pay him to do jack. What are you talking about? <laughs> wait, I'm not, getting, I'm not getting paid for this? Oh, wait, I meant, uh, yeah, Dave, the check's in the mail. Didn't I tell you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All you can eat, free Twinkies, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> and hugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I just it just goes to show you, I mean, you know, growing up with with Metasploit, I mean, I remember you know firing off my first exploit and, and with with Framework Two in you know 2004 or 2003 when I was working for the DoD, um, and you know just growing up with it, I mean, it's just been something that you can you can leverage and piggyback on uh, for anything, and that's kind of how you know the so social engineer toolkit was birthed. I mean, it was you know at first it started off essentially as as a as a wrapper around uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, that Metasploit does, and 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 now is kind of you know integrated into the into the core of it. So I mean, it's I mean Metasploit is is phenomenal for anything that you want to do when it comes to, to penetration testing, exploit development, or anything like that. I mean, it's just what's built into it is really far exceeded anything that I would have ever imagined it uh, actually going to. Well, we've had you know probably two hundred different contributors in the last eight years in the project. So just the number of people involved, the the brains that people involved, has been great. We tend to get those. I mean, there's some folks who've been with the project forever, like yourself, and the you know the folks on the call have been helping out forever. But we get a lot of these guys who basically do drive-by code commits, and then they'll show up with this giant, huge patch for some feature, contribute it, and then we never hear from them again. Was, that's how Railgun came came into play, wasn't it? I mean, it just came yeah, out of the, the, the the spool. Random patch to the mailing list, and then the maintainer basically dropped off, and then we had someone else pick up maintenance for it. Uh, Chamu picked up maintenance for it going forward, so he finally has commit rights as of last week. Um, so it's, it's, we get a lot of those. So the biggest challenge for our team has always been not how much cool code can we commit, but um, how do we take all this random cool stuff in this community and actually make it maintainable going forward? So that's why we're like super, you know, retentive about things like you know tab indents and API usage mm. and the right format and the right structure because we're maintaining probably eight hundred thousand lines of other people's Ruby code at this point. Yes, I remember. I remember uh, when I posted one of my first modules, which was the MS SQL uh, payload module. I sent it to HT. You know, and he sent it back to me, and uh, he's like, hey, "I just made a couple of changes, and I don't think there was one line of code that was the same from <laughs> when I actually submitted it. I mean, it was all changed. I mean, every single part about it. The whole thing was like completely redone. I'm like, huh? So let me ask you: yeah. is, is your name still on it? Yeah, he kept he kept the name on there. In fact, he didn't even put his on there. I'm like, dude, you wrote the whole thing practically. I mean, mine worked, but yours is like, you know, mine was like, you know, 300 lines of code. His was like three. You know, yeah. so. <laughs> that's been a dirty secret for years. That we get people with submit code that is just. I mean, your code is actually pretty good. I just I restructured it to make it match some of the other stuff we had placed, but we get some modules from folks that, you know, the whole thing is just one giant lump of tar when we get it, and we basically spend a couple hours reworking it all, redesigning it all, filling it out, adding targets, doing reliability testing on it, and we commit it, and of course they keep the name on it, we don't put our name on it. Um, and after the first time we do that for somebody, the second time we get a module time, it's perfect. Yeah. Like, I it, took exactly everything that you made modifications and changes to. I made sure that it wasn't in there a second time. So yeah, that's how we get developers. That's how we get really good contributors. Is we kind of we, we do kind of annoying. It's either that'll be you know harp on people for days and days and days about what's wrong with their module here and change this, change that. And you can ask some people like you know Jabra, who's been trying to commit one module for like two weeks now, and every time he tries to commit, it, we're like, yeah, but this is broken. So <laughs> people didn't run away because you know they're like, we'll do it for you. Like, no, 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 I want to do it. Like, all right, we're gonna keep bitching about it then. 
<laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's kind of a fun setup. But we, we absolutely have to do that. Otherwise, we get this pile of code we can't make it anymore. I mean, we, we start cutting stuff out if we can't maintain it. If, if it doesn't have the rest of the APIs. The nice thing about how we have things today is if we want to change something like um, like your MSQL models, for example, if we want to add insulin authentication to it, which uh, Alex on the team recently did, yep. um, we don't have to go through and change all 90 models. We use it, we just change one mix in for it. And then every model yep. uses the mix and gets a feature. So we were able to add insulin authentication to MSQL you know, very easily, whereas if it was, you know, every model is doing their own thing, it would take much longer to get it right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's when we started. I mean, I remember rehauling one of the core. Um you know, mix-ins, which was uh, the MS SQL one, which was basically the the brains behind everything that's Microsoft SQL. And so the actual module itself only ended up being, you know, a few lines of code uh, because it was all pulling from the central repository. And so all you have to do is make changes to that, and all of a sudden it's dynamically into everything else was was awesome. <laughs> We're on a fun boat, too, where we end up implementing all of our own protocol stacks. So we have our own custom SQL driver right yeah. top to bottom. <laughs> 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 we have our own SMB stack, we have our own DCRPC stack, we have our own crypto libraries, we have everything. So it's on the case we're we so dislike everyone else's code that we write our own code for everything. I was looking at it, I'm like, man, you guys just rebuilt the whole MS SQL uh, protocol by ourselves. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how many bugs we end up finding that way, but one of the cool things about that is we can now do evasion at like every single layer. So if we decide we want to do, you know, some kind of fancy way of encoding this packet or this protocol or this stub, we don't have to go through and hack someone else's library or find some way to add hooks, we basically change our code for it. Like SMB libraries, they said designed to be evasive from top to bottom. Whereas you look at the other exploit toolkits out there, and every other toolkit out there is using uh, Pi SMB basically. Yep. So if you, yep. let's say you're an IDS developer and you want to feature every one of those tools, just look for the Pi SMB traits and you basically signature all of them at once. If we try to do the same thing to that exploit, what you'll see is we match the Windows 1000 stack identical. Like we're byte for byte identical in the negotiation process on the past strings and everything else. Whereas if you use Pi SMB, you're very obviously Pi SMB. So you can basically write one sort signature right now that blocks every SMB exploit by both Python-based exploit tools. It's I don't know. I don't know. It's awesome. I, I kind of lost. Uh, got lost there for a second. Sorry, I was. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know one thing. I, when I was in, uh, you remember we were in uh, Texas uh, together, HD, and and I said, man, this dude, uh, you talk so fast. That I know that if I if I do anything like I had to put down anything else I'm ta- I'm touching or looking at or anything when when HD talks because I got to really focus to listen. Like I never met a guy who can who can keep an intelligent thought talking that fast all the time. It always blows <laughs> me away. We just had a but, guy um, at Rap Seven with a Jamaican background, so he goes hyper fast as fast as I do with a thick Jamaican accent. It's awesome. Wow. So we get along great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should have him on the podcast with you, and it will be like the auctioneer special. You know. <laughs> interesting. Interesting enough, I have a uh, Rapid Seven consultant downstairs right now. <laughs> He's in. We, we stuck him in like the really tiny room that's all, like overheated, just to kind of mess with him a little bit. <laughs> That's horrible. That's <laughs> horrible, dude. Well, I, you just got yeah, done telling HD you know. how much you love him and how much you <laughs> thank him for his help, and then you tell him you took one of his employees and shoved him into a room. No, I'm, I'm just, sure I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. He's he, he Our browser, guys are good like that. He'll, he'll take the abuse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rob's a good guy. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think we kind of hit on on everything when it comes to comes to the meta split. I mean, going back to the topic of the book, I mean. What you've really just said right there, and what you've tried to encapsulate of, of the dynamic, you know, situation of of Metasploit, we really tried to promote through the book. I mean, we basically wrote the first pages. You know, by the time of writing this book, it's already changed. Uh, but we're not focusing on the changes. We're focusing on, you know, what you do as as a person, as a pen tester, and try to incorporate a methodology around that. And that's where I think a lot of people, you know, kind of go amiss at. You know, what, what's the one of the most common questions uh, you hear HD about Metasploit? What's the, I mean, these are one of the most common ones that I hear, but maybe it's the same for you. Okay, that meta split. How do I hack this machine now? It's like, That's it. No, no, no. What do you even start with a problem, right? That's it. Yeah, the first, the first thing that anybody ever says is, how do I hack this machine? Um, and, and, and the reason being is, you know, they think that it's a, a, a simple process to where you, you point a tool at it and all of a sudden you're inside of a machine, uh, kind of like, uh, you know, Swordfish or the Matrix or something, right? And, uh, you know, what we really try to get, you know, instill in a very early um, time frame is create your own methodologies that are tailored to you and how you learn. So, you know, methodologies are great and, and everything that's in this book is great, but you're going to want to tailor, add things on based off of your experience and everything else. So, 
Um, you know, that's what we really try to promote through the book is, is to, to get rid of that question of, hey, how do I hack this box? Uh, but get into, you know, the question of, hey, I, you know, I, you know, did a footprint, I did reconnaissance, I, I know how to do this, I, you know, I'm trying this exploit off and it didn't fail and getting to actual, you know, intelligible discussion around penetration testing and becoming an expert in it. So, so yeah, I mean, someone like Val Smith and he'll come back and say, you know, I never use exploits in my pen tests. And yeah. he still uses exploit, but he only uses every other feature of Metasploit but the exploits because he never needs yep. the exploit side. Yep. So, uh, Dave or, or Jim, uh, is there going to be a, um, a no starch table or something at DEF CON or Black Hat where the book will be sold? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, Rapid7 is um, giving away. Um, a significant amount of um, books at Black Hat, um, so I'm not sure how they're going to the schedule that. But I think we're all planning on going to, um, you know, do some book signings and, and things like that around uh, Black Hat and DEF CON. Um, and HD, we'd definitely love to have you too. I mean, uh, I think there's some talks around uh, getting a book together with all of our signatures on it and doing like a hackers for charity for Johnny um, or something like that. Uh, to, you know, to maybe raise some some stuff. And I'd actually like my my book signed by by you as well. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll be out there, so I'll be there and um, all of DEF CON and most of Black Hat. probably be at B-Sides versus Black Hat for part of it, but yeah, you know, we'll definitely see you guys around and figure it out. Um, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, be, we'll see uh, at uh, B-Sides too. So. Yeah, you're, speak, you're speaking there, um, I'm speaking there, uh, so it'll be, it should be pretty fun. Yeah, definitely. I'm actually still working on my talk right now, so hopefully I'll get it done in time. I, I, you know, I, I cashed in my lazy card this time and said, well, I've got a talk. I've got one of three talks, and they'll all be awesome, so I'll submit something called Something Awesome. <laughs> and I managed to in with a okay, but a better day. <laughs> so yeah, we'll okay. See what <laughs> okay, and I, uh, I, I'm I, no joke. As as we've been going through this entire podcast, I'm working on my B sides presentation, the code behind the B sides presentation. So we're uh, <laughs> we're trying to get it done. I mean, I think we got it. We're um, we can talk about it offline. I know uh, Chris wants to to wrap it up, but uh, I mean, we're doing, doing some pretty cool stuff with uh, the Tenzi device. That that's going to be at B sides or at DEF CON? Besides, uh, oh, DEF CON's going to be even cooler, but I, I can't talk about it right now. We're going to do some, some neat stuff. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so just so everyone knows, so they're going to be able to get oh, the I'm sorry, that's, to, to, to rephrase that, it's not going to be even cooler. They're, all, they're equally going to be awesome. In fact, I think the B-sides want to be even more awesome, so I wanted to <laughs> throw that in there. Okay, so basically what you're saying is that B-sides stinks and you like DEF CON better? No, no, go to B-sides. Oh, I thought you were saying the other <laughs> way around. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what I heard. I'm going to cut out the part where you corrected it and just leave the other part, by the no, way. No. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably do that. Yeah. Okay, so everyone knows. You can get the book, Amazon, Borders, all bookstores. They're going to be brick-and-mortar bookstores also, as well as online bookstores. Yeah, it's so a no starch book, so th their distribution is everywhere. Everywhere. And you got the team, which is Red, red Team, or the code, I'm sorry, which is Red Team. And if they input that um, before July, what was the day? July nineteenth, you said. Nineteenth. Nineteenth. Oh no, no, no. Uh, They got two weeks from two weeks from Tuesday, uh, the uh, the twelfth. Uh, the the nineteenth is when the book is actually released. Okay, so if they if they buy it before then with that with that code red team, they get forty percent off the price if they buy it from No Starch. Correct. Perfect. Awesome. And um, and they can get it at Black Hat or DEF CON. You guys will be out there signing books and uh, having your um, you know, probably paparazzi and like people throwing them at your at your feet and begging for miracles and things like that. Right? Well, that happens all the time to me. Yeah, but right. <coughs> now it will happen to Ducky, too. <laughs> that yeah. guy. I hate that guy. <laughs> that stupid Ducky. Yeah, awesome. I um, think you're prepared to wear because it happens. Yeah, <laughs> there'll be there'll be uh, there'll be uh, MSF fanboys following you all over the place now. Um, what about uh, Derby? You know, that's the one thing we haven't talked about this podcast that I thought maybe we want to bring up real quick. Uh, DerbyCon. How, yes. What, how's everything going with that? Like, are we sold out? Are there still more tickets? Can people still get in, get involved with it? No, we still have more tickets, but I have to say that the uh, the turnout has been been unbelievable. Um, you know, uh, we're doing really well. We're looking at doing a couple of, of cool twists, and uh, we're already starting to plan next year, believe it or not, even though we're not done with this year. Yes. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, it's, it's gone phenomenal. And, and HD, uh, obviously, you're speaking there, and one of the first people to uh, to confirm uh, to come and speak at there. So, I mean, it's just, I mean, our speaker lineup has just been awesome. I can't wait for it. Yeah, that I, what we've seen from on the site, it looks like you really and pulled sponsors, it off. Sponsors are rolling through like crazy. Um, you know, we're... You, I mean, just the whole thing uh, hit home. I mean, you know, we had awesome uh, speaker submissions. And, you know, a common theme that I heard from everybody was, um, I'm scared to submit. 
because of the speaker lineup. And, and that's not what we're trying to go for. You know, we're trying to make it for everybody. And so, you know, tell all you, all of you listeners out there, you should, you know, definitely submit next year. Um, you know, don't be intimidated. I mean, we're all peers in this, this industry. Don't be scared, uh, to submit something. We're all, you know, equal as far as it goes. And, uh, so, but we did get a large speaker turnout. Um, and we just have some awesome speakers. I mean, there's a nice mix of up and coming, uh, security professionals, as well as you know the seasoned ones that that we've seen. So I mean, pretty excited about the about the the conference. In fact, we we didn't want to turn away a, a significant majority of them. Originally, we were going to have to turn away like 35 of them or 40 uh, talks. And so we figure out with different ways of of expanding the conference and getting more talks so that we can get fit in more talks in that that three three day weekend. So you know wow. we have a pretty good lineup going. That's pretty cool, man. That's really cool. So if people want more info, it's it's derbycon.com. Derbycon.com. Yep. Okay. Good. So they can check it out there, get a ticket, get involved in that. If you have any other questions, there's some uh, contact info on that site as well as the speaker lineup. If you're interested, who's coming, um, and that that'd be great. Um, I I think that's all we got for for this month. I mean, I really appreciate um, HD. Really appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, man. Thanks. When you listen back to this, you're gonna hear them making fun of me because I called you HDM. Yeah, that's what I always write in our emails back and forth. I always write HDM, and then they're making fun of me because they said that it sounded like I was talking about high definition modulation. Is that what you said, Mutz? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you'll hear that, but that's about the only bad thing we said. Um, thank you guys too for writing the book. You know, as far as uh, the MSF book, I'm look, really looking forward to seeing the feedback on that. I mean, I, I like it myself. I'm sure everyone else will like it. I've been reading it, and I'll I'll make sure I give you at least a three star review when it when it gets available on Amazon. I'm going to demote my uh, review on, on the, the, the social engineer book that you wrote um, to, to one. So Listen, I have to do three star because, uh, you know, I don't want it to be five. They'll think that you paid me for that review, you know. So I, I, well, we did. With hugs. Okay. Twinkies. Okay. Twinkies <laughs> and hugs. Okay. So I'll do, I'll, I'll, do a, I'll do a five star then. I'm just kidding. I'll do a, re- a realistic review of the book when I'm done reading it, which I'm almost done now. So um, thanks, guys, for coming on. Dookie. Devin, not Ducky, as Dave's been calling you. Dave, Thanks. Jim, Mutz, awesome podcast. A um, couple other things. <coughs> as I choked to Don't death. Don't die. You got as that? I, I choked to death on my own self. Um, um, one of the things I didn't mention when we were talking about the CTFs, um, plural, is that Spy Associates is one of our sponsors that always kind of sends us cool stuff that we get to test and play with. Uh, they're actually doing doing something neat this year. They helped me set up um, a couple little SE kits with some cool things that we're going to give away to the to the winners of the of the SE CTF for adults only. Does that sound better, guys? Than the adult? Yes. It better be free. It's free. <laughs> It's definitely free, and it's cool. I said, ad- I-, I said adult CTF before, and they all got made fun of me because it sounded bad, but I'm saying the CTF for adults. So you can check them out at spyassociates.com. And, of course, if you like the intro and outro music, which how can you not like the intro and outro music, it's Dual Core. So you can check them out at dualcoremusic.com. And um, he'll also be performing the song live at the podcast, uh, live podcast in Vegas. Which will be the Sunday of Def, uh, ending of DefCon. Uh, we'll have a live podcast out there. And Dual Core will be there performing the song. Uh, I guess that's about it. Thanks a lot, guys, for coming on, and we will see you next month at Vegas. Later. Bye. Adios. Okay. It's the SE derivative, that's me, I'm prime The last thing I want is suspicion of a crime My positive demeanor and my smile make it fine With eye contact for the right amount of time Too much or not enough doesn't seem for real Got a nice firm handshake sealing the deal Know a little about a lot and a lot about a little So most conversations put me somewhere in the middle My pop culture knowledge leaves me feeling kind of scary It lets me chat with working class and gossip secretaries Recon the boardroom, looking for the top thing Loosen up execs when I ask about the golf swing Start spewing secrets Just like a torrent Can't really blame them We all want to feel important It might seem different From what you were envisioning The key to communicate Is all about the listening I'm gonna use every trick in the book I'm try my best to get your hooked I'm gonna use every trick in the book I'm try my best to get your, get your I'm gonna use every trick in the book I'm try my best to get your hooked I'm gonna use every trick in the book I'm try my best to get your
Try my best to get you, get you I'm gonna 